Eli merely chased away the cat in the tavern, never expecting this act to become an excuse for the thugs to start trouble. Outsider Eli's every move was under the watchful eye of everyone, and it didn't take long for the thugs to confront him. That was my cat. I saw you knock him off the bar. Fine specimen. Despite Eli's apologies, claiming he didn't mean to scare it away, the thugs were relentless and even mocked, saying the cat had been here for two years, earning more right to stay than Eli. He was unaware that people who are usually quiet and reserved often hide immense power. <laughs> On the streets, Eli had already witnessed these thugs brutally killing innocents and looting resources. If it weren't for the thugs brandishing firearms, Eli would have long denounced these bandits' actions. Eli could only suppress his own beastly nature, all the while praying from the environment. It's clear that Eli lives in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where war had nearly led to humanity's extinction, leaving the entire planet scarred. In this violent and bloody world, money had lost its value, and scarce resources were what survivors fought over. Due to the scarcity of food, Eli had no choice but to hunt wild cats for sustenance. Although it pained him, survival necessitated such actions. Passing through a dim and cold no-man's land, Eli opens up a rusty junk car in order to find a pair of comfortable shoes, and feels along the footsteps of the driver, who has been turned into a white bone, only to find that the shoes have been taken. This shows how even a pair of shoes is a scarce commodity in this world. With no other choice, he had to continue walking through the scorched earth until he stumbled upon a dilapidated wooden hut. Hoping to find more resources, he kicked the door open with his makeshift gun in hand, cautiously entered to ensure it was safe, and then started looking for useful supplies. However, the thick layer of dust covering everything inside indicated it had been abandoned for a long time. Eli tried to get some water but quickly abandoned the idea. Upon opening the door to another room, he was suddenly confronted with the sight of a man who had hanged himself, clearly in a state of despair before his death. Surprisingly, he left behind a pair of intact leather boots, which Eli immediately put on, because from then on, he would carry a book about human faith, in search of the legendary oasis. With the boots on, he excitedly started to twist and turn. In the evenings, Eli eats the meat of his captured cat and collects the grease from the grill to use as a lip balm, a treat he hasn't enjoyed in a long time. Then he took out his Walkman, wiped his weapon while listening to soothing music, and used a pack of wet wipes to clean his body. The scars on his back were testament to the many hardships he had endured. Before sleeping, Eli purified his soul with the Book of Faith, knowing he couldn't have lasted this long without his mission. That night, he slept very soundly, waking up. He found his Walkman had run out of power, bathed in the first light of dawn. Eli continued on his journey to find the oasis. Along the way, he encountered a woman seeking help. But in this post-apocalyptic world, any misguided compassion could lead to death. Eli didn't rush to help her but instead surveyed the surroundings. He had already smelled the scent of bandits nearby. And sure enough, a group of them appeared. The bandits demanded Eli hand over all his supplies, which he obviously refused. They thought he was just an ordinary man, not realizing God was already beckoning them. When their underlings reacted, they rushed at him with various weapons. But Eli met God in just five seconds. After looting the supplies, Eli did not forget to say a prayer. Seeing Eli's bravery, the woman wanted to join him. However, Eli didn't take her along, and soon after, he witnessed a scene of thugs robbing. Then he arrived at a small town, instantly becoming the center of attention as he walked on the dilapidated streets, and was soon targeted by the local bullies. Faced with provocation, Eli warned them to do less evil in the future, intending only to scare them, but the man was so frail he fell to the ground. Never to get up again, Eli realized he had stirred up trouble and that leaving the tavern in peace was nearly impossible. A mob quickly surrounded him as Eli prayed, preparing for battle. The beast within him was gradually awakened. In no time, the thugs were down, and the tavern was littered with bodies. <laughs> Just as Eli was about to deal with the last person, Solara, who had returned for water, stopped him. At this moment, the tavern owner's men, fueled by anger, rushed towards Eli but were stopped by Carnegie from upstairs. Having witnessed the entire ordeal, 
Carnegie realized that encountering someone as skilled as Eli in these chaotic times was rare. He invited Eli upstairs and, after some flattery, hoped Eli would serve him to expand the town's influence. But Eli had his own mission to complete and didn't want to become an accomplice to bandits, so he politely declined Carnegie's offer. Carnegie wasn't angry, instead, he generously invited Eli to stay the night. Given Carnegie's many armed men, Eli had no choice but to accept the offer and decided to stay for the night. But he remained highly vigilant because the only book of faith he carried was coveted by many. Carnegie scavenges all sorts of books in hopes of finding it so that he can enslave the surviving humans through this book. Though he returned disappointed each time, he occasionally found unexpected gains, like the small bottle of shampoo he acquired today. In a world where water is scarce and the scent of fragrance long forgotten, this bottle of shampoo was a rare treasure to him, yet he decides to use it to pamper Claudia. Late at night, Eli's door is knocked on by Claudia herself, who brings him dinner. Upon first meeting Claudia, Eli mistakenly thinks she's pretending to be blind. After some testing, he realizes she truly cannot see. Eli's initial resistance softens, and after thanking Claudia for the food, he even compliments the fragrance she carries. Claudia touches her hair, her eyes moistening. This is the best compliment she's ever received. After Claudia leaves, Eli immediately checks the food for poison. Meanwhile, Claudia reports back to Carnegie about testing Eli. She believes Eli is different and won't stay to be commanded by Carnegie. Carnegie, having anticipated this, plans to use his daughter Solara to seduce Eli, hoping to win him over through a physical relationship. Claudia pleads incessantly, but how could Carnegie ever consider her appeals? Just as Eli was reading the Book of Faith and preparing to sleep, a knock at the door interrupted him. Knowing the visitor was Solara, he didn't immediately let her in but quickly hid the book. Solara's intention was clear, and after understanding her purpose, Eli was somewhat taken aback and then immediately opened the door, asking Solara to leave. When Solara expressed that if she left, Carnegie would harm her mother, Eli mistakenly thought they were family. Solara shared her plight with Eli and requested to sleep on the floor for the night, so she could return and report back the next day. Faced with Solara's continuous pleading, Eli reluctantly allowed her to stay. Unexpectedly, Solara stumbled upon the book. Eli quickly took back the book and remained tight-lipped about it. Despite Solara being illiterate and eagerly wanting to know what the book was about, Eli still kept silent. Before dinner, Eli suddenly grasped Solara's hands and began to pray an experience Solara had never had before. Early the next morning she began to take her mother's hand in prayer in Carnegie's presence. Carnegie immediately sensed something was amiss. These words were clearly not something the illiterate Solara could express. Obviously coming from the Book of Faith, after learning the truth through underhanded means, Carnegie hurriedly began searching for Eli, only to find that Eli had vanished. So, he ordered his men to launch a massive search throughout the town eventually encountering Eli in front of a hardware store. It was then that Eli realized the secret of the Book of Faith had been exposed, and he was in grave danger. Carnegie bluntly demanded that the book be handed over, but Eli would never hand over the only orphan copy in the world. He turned and walked away without hesitation, unaware of a sniper watching him from a high vantage point. Carnegie orders Reed Rich to take out Eli. With Eli's precise marksmanship, the surrounding enemies are quickly eliminated. At this moment, his ammunition runs out, and he swiftly takes out a spray gun and fires at Carnegie, hitting Carnegie's calf with one shot. Carnegie's subordinates hurriedly escort him to retreat. Suddenly, the sound of a baby crying is heard in the distance. After a brief contemplation, Eli decides to stand up. Now, only Reed Ridge is left, aiming his gun at Eli. The two confront each other for a long time, and Reed Ridge finally lowers his gun. Perhaps he realizes that mutual killing between people will only make this world more hopeless, or he is unwilling to kill a person who adheres to his faith for the sake of a tattered book. Eli leaves the small town in this way, and Solara also seems to have new thoughts. Eli continues his journey westward because only by safely delivering this book to its destination can humanity have hope. Along the way, Solara quietly follows, knowing that only by following Eli can she escape Carnegie's control. However, Eli is well aware of the dangers along the way and does not want to involve Solara. Nevertheless, Solara knows where Carnegie gets water, and Eli happens to need to replenish his water supply. So the two go to the water source together. After replenishing the water, 
Eli claims that his sunglasses were left inside and asks Solara to go in and retrieve them, he then quickly closes the iron door, trapping Solara inside. Eli does this to ensure that he has no worries in the upcoming journey. The furious Carnegie demands the immediate capture of Eli. But at this point, Redridge is no longer willing to risk his life for a tattered book and requests Solara as a reward to quickly obtain the book. Carnegie readily agrees. Subsequently, they drive out to intercept Eli. Meanwhile, Solara, who has escaped, is targeted by bandits, and Eli appears just in time to save her. After this incident, Eli no longer expels Solara but instead proceeds with her towards the oasis. Just then, Carnegie quickly discovers Eli and Solara's whereabouts through the circling vultures in the sky. However, as night approaches, the team, worried about missing Eli and Solara, decides to continue the pursuit the next day. Giving Eli and Solara a chance to be alone, Solara has always wanted to know the contents of the book. At first, Eli is somewhat resistant, but later he tells her the origin of the book. It turns out that the book does not belong to Eli. Whenever he feels lost, there is always a voice in his mind telling him that there is a book that can resolve it. Even more amazing is that this voice also guided him to find that book. Therefore, he reads it every night and has persisted for 30 years, already able to recite it backward, until one day. That voice comes again, demanding that he take this book to the oasis in the west to save more people in despair, so he decides to carry this book all the way to the west, which also makes Solara curious about the secrets in the book. She secretly flips through the book while Eli is asleep but is discovered by Eli and warned not to touch it again. The next day, the two continue their journey, with Carnegie's pursuers in close pursuit. In the post-apocalyptic world with scarce medical conditions, Eli's injuries become increasingly severe in search of a water source. They find a strange wooden house but fail to notice the text on the warning sign, realizing that the surroundings are unusually quiet. With only this one house, Eli senses something amiss but decides to take the risk due to the need for drinking water. They break in after knocking on the door without a response, only to accidentally fall into a trap. The elderly couple points guns at them. Eli tries to explain but is not forgiven. Instead, Solara arouses the couple's interest and is invited into the house for tea. However, Eli notices abnormalities in the couple's behavior, especially when the old man takes them to see his trophies at dense field of graves. Eli realizes that this couple survives by luring passers-by and eating human flesh. No matter what, Eli refuses to stay. The old man threatens with a weapon, but Eli also pulls out a gun. Just as they are about to leave, Carnegie's team arrives. Eli knows there is no escape and prepares for battle. Carnegie demands the book and Solara. After a confrontation, Carnegie decides to launch a strong attack. A book is thrown out of the window, the battle is about to begin, and both sides start shooting at each other. Shit! Reach Ridge takes out a rocket launcher and fires, instantly killing the old woman. The old man's anger is instantly ignited, and he picks up a rifle to join the shooting. Subsequently, Reach Ridge takes out a Gatling gun, and with the dense bullets raining down, the small wooden house is instantly riddled with holes like a hornet's nest. Without the shelter of cover, Eli and Solara are captured on the spot. Carnegie threatens Solara's life, forcing Eli to hand over the Book of Faith. After obtaining the book, Carnegie considers Eli useless and decisively shoots him. <laughs> Eli falls to the ground, but his belief makes him unwilling to give up. He struggles to stand up and continues to fight, still wanting to resist despair through faith. However, God does not have mercy on him, and he finally falls. His eyes filled with regret and dismay. Carnegie takes the book and leaves, while Solara takes the opportunity to fight back. She then takes out a rope from her pocket and strangles the driver, causing the vehicle to lose control. When Carnegie saw this, she immediately turned around, and Solara ripped the driver out of the car, seeing a bomb still on the seat. She immediately throws it towards Carnegie's convoy. Luckily, Carnegie's car reacts swiftly and dodges the blast. But the car behind is not so lucky. The furious Carnegie immediately rushes towards Solara. Just as Solara is about to start the car, Reed Ridge grabs her, but he doesn't stop her. Instead, he pulls out the knife inserted into his abdomen, slowly getting out of the car. He peacefully closes his eyes, facing the direction of home. He has long been tired of living on the edge of a knife. At this moment, 
his soul finds peace. Carnegie looks on with mixed feelings, in such a dilapidated world. Why do humans not reflect and still kill each other? Afterwards, he does not continue to pursue Solara, while Solara drives the car to find the place where Eli fell, only to discover that he is not there, so Solara searches along the way and finally finds the weakened Eli. It turns out that the shot did not hit a vital spot. With his tenacious willpower, Eli still has not forgotten his mission, that's why the film is called The Book of Eli. He's the most direct presentation of the faith. After a long drive, Eli finally smells the scent of sea salt, and the oasis he yearns for comes into view. On the other side of the coast is the paradise he seeks. They then row a boat into it. This place is like a huge museum, gathering the essence of human knowledge. With only one book missing the Bible, Eli's arrival just makes up for the regret. When the curator asks him where the book is, Eli has already memorized the entire book in his mind. He orally recites it, allowing the curator to write it down without missing a single word. When Carnegie opens that book, it turns out to be blank pages. Later, he discovers that the paper is engraved with Braille and begs Claudia to read it for him. However, without Redridge's protection, Carnegie's power has significantly waned. The desolate Carnegie watches as his bar is divided by his former subordinates and finally falls into despair. Eli leaves the world after orally reciting the Bible, but he leaves behind the spirit and faith of humanity. Another scripture is also recited by a young man. At the end of the story, Solara inherits Eli's spirit and embarks on the path of spreading faith proving that only through passing it on from generation to generation can the light of the human spirit flourish forever.